Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created Sally, my third and final Halloween doll. So we're going to start things off a little bit differently, jumping straight into the preparation of the hair. This doll that I'm using is a Laguna Blue. She came to me missing her face paint and hair already, so because I didn't have to record that stuff, it kind of threw me off and I forgot to record showing the body. I'm taking 100% acrylic yarn and I am cutting long pieces off. I'm then taking those pieces and I am dividing them into their individual strands. I am going to be doing a mix of colors in this, so I'm using this other one. And although it says it, it has some polyester in there, the polyester is actually just a single thread that they have woven through this, so I'm having to remove that as well. So this one doesn't have multiple strands I have to unwind, it has a thread that I have to pull out. So I'm prepping all of this yarn. With all of that work done to the yarn, I now take several of those strands and I flat iron them just a bit. Now to separate those fibers, I'm going to go to the very tip of it, grasp just the ends, and pull them out. This is just pulling out those separate fibers. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with my other color of yarn. I did try to do these at the same time, like having strands of both in the mix, but because the fibers happened to be slightly different lengths, it didn't want to pull well, so I did have to do them in separate and then mix them later. This is a really great method for mixing up yarn hair because it gives a very unique color. I learned about this technique from the doll artist Hiki Hiki Su. I will link their Instagram and YouTube down below because this is a really great technique and they do go into depth on their own channel. When I have two piles of about the same size of the different color yarns, I go ahead and pile them together. Then I take the two ends and I just start pulling and then bringing them back together. This is just going to mix up those colors. Finally, time to start the reroute. I pull a small section out from my prepared yarn hank and then I slide it onto the needle towards the end so that I keep as much length as possible and then I just plug it into the head. Because I am working with yarn, I'm rerouting every other hole along the hairline and then about every three or four holes throughout the rest of the hair. Using this pulled method allowed me to keep the unique look of the yarn quality of hair that Sally has and still maintain the length. For her part line, I'm just plugging hair down into the area where I have marked for the part. And I'm not pre-punching these holes, I'm just using the tool to go plunge down into it. And I plunge it in and make it go to one side, and then I go back down in that same hole and pull another strand of yarn to the other. It was at this point that I remembered I forgot to paint the scalp. So I'm pulling the hair up and out of the way and giving her scalp a quick coat of paint. Once that's dry, I finish up the remainder of the part line and the rest of the reroute. I felt like this particular Laguna head had a whole lot of holes in her head. Like, I had to be very careful not to plug too many of those in because it was going to make her hair way too poofy. Now with the reroute complete, I use a little liquid fusion glue and I squeeze some down into the head. Then I swirl it around with a Q-tip, making sure to touch all those plugs to help secure them in place. Then I set her aside to dry for 24 hours. Now time for some body prep. Because Sally doesn't need fins and webbed fingers, I need to remove those. You'll notice right here I'm doing a big no-no, cutting towards my thumb. Don't do like I do. I quickly realized my mistake and corrected my grip because I know me and I would have slipped and stabbed myself right in the finger. I do a little bit of sanding to the cut areas to smooth it out. Now to move on to her fingers. Cut down in between each finger, removing the webbing. Trying to be very careful to not chop off a finger. Whoops. I swap that one out with one from my stock box. I'll just have to make plans later on down the road to have a Laguna with a missing finger. The second attempt went much better. Now to fill in her leg holes, I'm using a little epoxy sculpt and I mix up equal parts of A and B and then I just shove a little bit down into those holes. I make sure to make it a little bit domed when I'm working on it. I can always go back and sand it down to make it flush with her skin, but I don't want to have to do another pass of epoxy sculpt later. After the epoxy's had a chance to cure for 24 hours, I start scraping down any of the seam lines with my X-Acto blade and giving her a nice good sanding because everyone knows how much I love sanding. I seriously need to think about investing in a sanding box like Delightful has because that crap gets everywhere.
Now to give the epoxy areas and her arms and hands a coat of paint. And I start out, I've mixed up this paint color and it's a pretty good match. I start just trying to brush it on because I'm super lazy and I hate cleaning my airbrush. But eventually I admit defeat and I take her outside and just sprayed her with the airbrush because this paint was just looking like a hot mess. While it was a pretty good match, when you're doing brush strokes, it's harder to blend it out and make it look like a gradient. So when I spray it, you don't really notice because it's a more sheer layer. This dress was one of the more difficult ones I've ever worked on. It seems like a very simple concept because it's just a sheath dress, but all the patches make it very difficult to sew. To help me with this, I took this level up pattern from Requiem Art, made the basic sheath, I then took my fabric marking pen and traced out where I thought all of her pieces would be at. I used reference to help me draw out these pieces because I wanted to keep it relatively true to the, what her dress looked like, but I did want to keep in mind areas that are harder to sew because if I have things meeting and they're meeting at a corner in one of the pieces, that's going to be very difficult to sew into place. So I tried to have everything meeting at straight lines. Once I'm happy with the patch placement, I use my Sharpie to permanently mark those areas, and I also label all of the patches with what color they are. Next, I cut all of those pieces out and transfer them to paper and create a pattern. I didn't actually cut out all the pieces at one time. I found a general area where I felt like it would be easiest to work with first, and I just cut out small sections at a time. This way, I didn't lose track of where all the pieces went. I would take the pieces one at a time and cut them out and add seam allowance wherever they would be meeting up with another patch. I did have to keep an eye out for areas that the pattern piece already had seam allowance on it, like some of the side seams and the shoulder seams. With most of the pieces cut out now for the top part of the dress, I'm going to start assembling. I'm attaching the front orange to the back pink. At first I attempted to sew up the center front seam and then I realized it was going to create a squared off seam for the yellow to go into. That's a very hard seam to sew. I now attach the yellow to the orange and pink. I sew up the shoulder seams on the orange and pink and I sew up the sides on the sleeve to create a tube. Now with my side bodice inside out and my sleeve right side out, I slide my sleeve onto the sharpie. I put my sharpie through the armhole and I match up the seams on these and then I stitch it into place. I'm not being too concerned about how messy these stitches are because with Sally she has very messy stitches all over her dress so this will just add to the aesthetic. Once I've completed the full circle, I can slide it off the sharpie and then flip the bodice right side out. And you can see, now it's attached with some visible stitching just like Sally. Now for the other side, I'm going to attach the orange sleeve to the armhole of the pink side. With that sewn in place, I can flip this with right sides facing and sew up the side seam and along the sleeve. To complete the top part of the dress, I'm going to sew up that center front seam and I just align right sides facing and sew that in place. I'm not going to show sewing up every single one of these patches because it will depend on how you've sketched out your own design, but just know going forward that try to keep things in a straight line, try to avoid doing anything on the square, and remember to press your seams flat. You can see on the inside here I've got all of my seams nice and flat so I'm not creating weird bumps and bulges. She does still have two remaining patches to add and those are just the ones that just are floating in the middle of two of her patches. I've just taken a clip of fabric and a little bit of iron-on interfacing, and I'm attaching that directly to the dress with a flat iron. Because I couldn't find fabric that had all of these very unique and doll scale patterns to them, I'm going to be drawing those on with a fabric marker, and I'm using these Arteza markers. I just sketch in all of the different designs, and then I let it dry for six hours according to the package direction. I iron it for five minutes on the cotton setting. So it is very important that if you're going to be using these fabric markers that you make sure that you're getting a fabric that can be ironed on that high of a heat for that long. I do have to say I'm not 100% sold on these markers. I just wasn't a big fan because they didn't have really great colors and they tended to bleed a lot. I did have to replace her yellow patch because some of the marker just bled right up onto it. Once I've set all those colors, I can sew up the back seam and add some Velcro. Our final step is all of the black stitching that she needs. I put it onto the doll so I can see where everything is laying and then I start stitching on all of those little black stitches. We're giving the appearance of a very 
haphazardly put together dress, but we do not want it to be haphazardly put together. We want this to last the ages, so we're going to just make these decorative. The dress may have been the biggest pain in my butt for this doll, but it turned out so great. I'm really happy with how the dress looks. So I was considering starting up a Patreon, and I would like to hear from you guys if this would be something that you're interested in. I was thinking about putting full-length videos up. I wouldn't have commentary on them, but I would show my complete face-ups. There wouldn't be any cuts in there. Just let me know if this would be something you're interested in and what kind of content you would like to see on a Patreon from me. I need to make her socks now, so I have this pattern traced onto this jersey fabric, and I'm just sewing up that seam. Once the sock is sewn, I slide it onto her foot, which I have wrapped up in some clean film to protect it, and I am going to sketch in those three stripes with the fabric markers, just following the same steps as before. Her outfit gets finished off with some black pumps. These are just the 3D printed ones from my store that I've gently sanded and painted black. I'm just testing the fit with her shoes because I needed to make sure that this fabric wasn't too thick for them. Sally, of course, needs some accessories, so I decided to 3D model and print her a spool of thread. I'm just hopping over into 3D Max, and I'm creating a cylinder. I'm making sure my sides are set to 100 to make sure that's nice and smooth. I convert that over to an editable poly, and then come in and select the top and the bottom, and doing some extrudes and bevels till I have the shape that I like. Next, I create another cylinder, and this one is just going to be for my hole that's going to run through that. I make sure the diameter is what I'm going to want for the hole in the spool. Then I center that over the spool and make sure it's long enough that it's poking out either side. Then I'm going to go down here, select both, and zero them out so I'm certain that it's in the dead center of that spool of thread. Now I select my spool and click on Pro Boolean. I make sure I have subtraction selected and then I click the start picking. I click on the cylinder I've created and this creates the nice hole in my spool. Now my spool's all modeled, I can export it as an STL and then open it up in Lyche Slicer. When I first bring it into Lyche Slicer, I play around with the scale a little bit and I figure out which size that I think is going to work best. I find that Lyche Slicer's magic button is a pretty great tool for just laying out supports and stuff. So I click that, I look around to see if it needs any changing, and I do feel like there's a couple of spots that have weak supports, and so I move those around and get them to where I like them. I scrub through the layers, checking for any issues that might pop up. I make sure the layer that my model actually starts on has a support connected to it. I found that if you don't have it there and it's just floating, that it'll detach and you'll have failure in print. Another thing to look out for is areas that are going to create suction. These are areas that have voids, but they are completely surrounded with resin. Usually they need a drain point in them. In this case, the hole runs all the way through the spool, so it's already creating a drain itself. If you have areas like that that don't have a drain point, then it's going to wind up sticking to your FEP and not your build plate. Once I'm happy with my supports, I go ahead and export this, and I export this in the file format that I need for my particular printer. Now I've gotten my file uploaded onto my printer and I select the file that I need to use and I hit print. Then in about an hour I come and check on it. It has printed beautifully so I'm going to pull it off of the build plate. I'm using my spatula to pry it up and I'm making sure to wear gloves because I don't want to get this resin on my hands. I drop this down into my basket and put it in my vat of alcohol and then set it to wash on my wash and cure station. Once it's had it spin around in the alcohol tank, I give it a quick rinse off under some warm water. Then I come back and I rip off all of the supports. I find that it is easier to take the supports off before curing and there's less chance that you're going to chip the print. With all the supports removed, I pop it under the cure lamp for two minutes. Now we have an adorable little spool. I just give this a nice little sanding and base it out in some white paint. For the final detailing on the spool, I'm going to add some real thread and this needle head that I've cut off to be doll sized. I first apply a little bit of super glue along the spool. I then wrap it up completely with some thread until I get it nice and covered. I cut off any of the excess at the end. Now I take one single strand and I thread the needle head. I pull the two bottom ends together, sandwiching the needle head in there to keep it secure. And then I super glue the ends in place and now the spool is complete.
And Sally, of course, needs a companion, so I found Zero here on Thingiverse. His file was actually made for a filament printer, but I didn't want to print him on our filament printer because the resin one looks so much better. I edited his file so that he would work on my resin printer instead, and then I just got him printed. He did require a good bit of sanding because I accidentally put the wrong size of support, so a little bit extra cleanup this time around, but I just get him nice and sanded down, and then I glue him all together. Of course, I glue him to my hands a few times before I get him together. I will have a link in the description box below for the original file, and I will share this file out with you too if you have a resin printer and want to get zero printed. Once he's all together, all I need to do is paint him. So I give him a couple of coats in Mr. Super Clear, and I first start sketching out his black eyes, and then paint his orange nose and his little red collar. When I'm happy with my paint job, I give him a couple of coats of Krylon Clear acrylic coating. Just want to protect it from getting chipped and scratched. You have no idea how many times it took me to actually say that correctly. <laughs> Such a tongue twister. Now on to the face up. These are all the watercolor pencils and pen pastels I used, plus there's the airbrush colors that I used to match her skin tone. I give her a couple of coats of Mr. Super Clear and then I get started on her face up. The first thing I tackle is her eye shape, and I use a light brown watercolor pencil and gently sketch these on. When I get a shape that I'm happy with, I go ahead and draw the other one and try to keep them as symmetrical as possible. Next, I begin sketching in her iris shapes, and this took me a bunch of different tries. Here's attempt number one. Now I erase that, and attempt number two. Just a side note, I should have just stuck with attempt number two. And erase that. Attempt three. And erase that. And attempt four. Just a side note, I don't like this one either in the long run and I change it too. On attempt number four, I think this is going to be the winner and I start blocking in the colors. I wind up not really liking the direction that I took and I do change it at the very end of the doll. But, for now, here's what I was doing. After the colors are blocked in, I start coloring in her scleras with some white. However, because I've erased so many times, it's not really laying down any color. Next, I start sketching in her stitch lines on her face, the ones that come out from her mouth and around her eye. I add in some red to her waterline and tear duct. I use a deep burgundy to define her lip shape and fill it in. I'm using a dusty turquoise to start shading in on her face and I'm shading in around her eyes and nose and under her lips and along her scar lines. I do think that if I decide to tackle another Sally in the future, I'm going to do it a little differently. I would try to you know, make it my own take on the doll and keep it into the style that I normally work in and actually add eyebrows and things like that to her. Next time I think it'll be a Sally inspired couture rather than Sally herself. Over the course of the face up I used a bunch of different colors to add dimension to her shading and I primarily used that dusty turquoise but I also hit it with shades of purple, some deep grays, and some yellow too. Then I do a passive purple shading just to add some more dimension. I dust her cheeks and a few other spots on her face with a dusty peach color. I dust her forehead, her cheekbones, and the top of her nose with a little bit of white pastel. I dust her eyes with a black pastel and blend it out. This is just helping the eye to appear more three-dimensional and round. I darken up her eyeliner with a black watercolor pencil. The last thing I do on layer one is add in some detailing lines to her lips with a darker red. I then give her a coat of Mr. Super Clear and get started on layer two. With my white watercolor pencil, I brighten up some of the areas of the sclera. I also give the iris a little bit of a highlight there on the bottom. Next, I take my black watercolor pencil and darken up the outer edge of the iris. With my white watercolor pencil, I highlight her lower eyelid. 
and I also used some black pastel to really deepen that under eye bag area. Since Sally doesn't have eyebrows, I'm making sure to do some subtle contouring to her forehead just to give it some visual interest. If I feel like I've gotten a little too heavy handed with the blushing but I don't want to accidentally smear it into other areas, I take my kneaded eraser and I gently tap against the surface. This helps pull up just some of the pastel. Next I use a black watercolor pencil and start adding in a whole of her stitch lines. Once all the stitch lines are in place, I add the puncture holes for where they're stitched in. I sketch in her eyelid creases and add a pop of white to help highlight them. I punch up those bags that Sally has under her eyes with a watercolor pencil, just defining that edge of the crease there, and then I darken up the nostril holes. Here I am, finally getting around to those yellows I said I would be dusting on, and I'm just tapping those at a few places around her face. This is just helping give her skin some visual interest. I seal her with Mr. Super Clear and start layer 3 with some highlights to her stitch lines and her seams. I sketch in Sally's signature eyelashes. Four little V's coming up out of her eyes. I add in her catch lights and then I was considering her finished. However, something was just bugging me about her and I just really didn't like the eyes. I did a quick mock-up where she just had the white eyes with the single dots and I went in later off camera and then just painted in her scleras white, gave them a dusting contour and dotted in single black pupils. To get started on her body, I had already sketched out a reference guide for where all of her stitches were, so as I draw them on her body, I just reference that picture to see where I need to put them. I just sketch them all out, add in the stitch lines and the puncture marks. I then tackle all of the shading on her body using the same colors that I used on her face up. I make sure to shade along her stitch lines in any areas that would naturally get shadow. I also want to bring brighter colors up into the areas that will have highlights. Finally, she just needs to get dressed. I pop her head on and then get her dressed up. Shortly after I got her dressed is when I decided I was going to change those eyes, so I wrapped her up and off-camera repainted them. You'll see the final results in the photos at the end. At the time this video goes live, she'll be available in my Etsy store, so please check her out if you're interested. I want to thank you all so much for watching and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on those bell notifications so you never miss a video. Remember, always be creating!